So, one of the coolest uses that I've found for chat is something that I'm surprised I don't really see more people talking about, but chat is actually pretty darn good at translating languages. You know those things in Star Trek? They got that universal translator that lets aliens speak their own language while the audio comes out in English? Yeah, well, we're really not that far away from that after all. ChatGPT came out two months ago, and in that time we have learned that it is scary good at translating from one language to another. So I want to talk a little bit about what that means and why it's such a big deal and how it'll probably probably affect the future. Now just to be clear, I would not recommend using the translation abilities of chat for anything serious or professional for obvious reasons, but if you have a pen pal or maybe some friends from other countries or maybe your girlfriend is from another country and you just want to have some fun seeing how your words get translated in her language, this could be a pretty fun tool to dive into. And this video is going to be a little different from normal because this is actually a topic that I know quite a lot about because I made the genius mistake of obtaining two degrees that I do not use and one of those degrees is in linguistics. I studied language composition and structure extensively and I will tell you as someone who majored in linguistics why I am so impressed with chat's language abilities, but to keep this video accessible to the general audience, I'm gonna try and explain everything without using all the complicated linguistic jargon and definitions that we normally use when talking to each other. So here's a crash course in linguistics without any of the linguistic terms. To put it simply, personally I like to generalize language ability into five levels. One is beginner, which basically means you are totally new, you don't know the grammar, and the only thing you really know how to say is no bueno. The second level is intermediate. And the best way I can explain intermediate is you're definitely not a beginner. And that's it. You know more than a beginner, but you're still not good enough to hold a conversation and you'd probably have a heart attack trying to read a book in that language. Third is advanced. This level means that you're comfortable with the language and you can probably hold conversations and you can probably even navigate websites in that language. But you would probably hesitate to read, write, or sign business and legal contracts in that language. Level four is professional. At this level, you can operate comfortably and clearly at the highest levels of positions in society, which means you can read and sign business and legal documents without being worried that you're misunderstanding the meaning of words. And if someone's life depended on you to explain something to a doctor, you could do that with exact, clear, correct, and concise detail. And level five is native. And the best way to explain native is you can hold a three hour conversation on the phone with somebody and they will have no clue that you're not from their country. Native level means that you not only understand, read, write, and comprehend what people are saying perfectly, you also understand and mimic the intonation, expressions, slang, and culture of the language you are speaking. Now usually when I explain this, the first thing people ask me is how do you tell the difference between professional and native level people? And the answer is actually pretty simple. It's culture, expression, and behavior. Think of somebody like Starfire from Teen Titans. This prom is some manner of duel, yes? Robin eagerly accepts. It's not a duel, Star. It's a date. Ah! He does not accept! Do you hear? Robin does not accept! Technically, there's nothing wrong with her grammar or her accent, but she is clearly from a different place. Another actual real-life example I have is I was working on a group project and there was this one cute Chinese girl from Beijing in the group. Now, she was obsessed with English. She studied English her whole life and she was determined to master it and she was pretty darn good at it. She loved spending all of her time practicing English and she had a perfect American English accent. So if you heard her say something like, it's nice to meet you, my name is Sarah, you would probably assume that she is Chinese American. But after spending spending a couple hours with her during group projects, you would start to notice a few weird things. And I don't mean it like she made any mistakes or said something wrong. Technically, she had better grammar and vocabulary than I did. The accent was perfect. She had absolutely no problem listening and speaking in English at all. But she would just say some funny things that Americans just wouldn't say. Like every time we had to present something to the teacher, she would be afraid that we would forget something and then say, you must be sure to remember our paper is due by 12 a.m. And I remember hearing that and it just made me smile because, because there was something just so weird and adorably cute about it. Like no American ever said, you must be sure to remember whatever. You know, like we would probably say, don't forget or hey, make sure you remember or hey, just remember. 
but saying, you must be sure to remember. At that point, I would start to assume that you were probably born and raised somewhere else. And the funny part was she said it so happily and confidently that none of us really had the heart to tell her that the phrase sounded kind of funny. So we all just kind of rolled with it and smiled at her and embraced it as this kind of inside joke. We would actually start saying this to each other to make her believe that this was totally the way Americans speak normally. You know, we would just joke around with each other and say, hey Daniel, you must be sure to remember not to f up tomorrow. And Dan would be like, don't worry man, I'm always sure to remember. But yeah, long story short, native level basically requires you to assimilate the culture and expression of the language you are speaking. It's very possible to become professional in a second language, but still not assimilate the proper expressions of day-to-day -day culture in that language. This is why spies who try and infiltrate other countries get caught, because even if they speak the language perfectly, the natives can always tell whether you're not from around there. This is also the reason why even between countries that technically speak the same language, like like Spain and Mexico, the natives can always tell if you're using Spanish from another country. So native is basically the final boss for all people trying to learn a second language. So how does this relate to AI? Well, every language has a different learning curve, and the difficulty is different depending on your starting language and your target language. For example, if you're an English speaker natively, then a language like Chinese, Japanese, Arabic, and Russian would probably be more difficult for you to learn than something like Spanish. However, Japanese is much easier to learn if your native language is Korean. And you see this in Google Translate all the time. Like, Google Translate is much better at translating things from English to Spanish compared to translating English to Korean. So I wanted to go ahead and give ChatGPT something kind of hard. So I told it to generate a paragraph explaining why Super Smash Bros is so popular, and it obviously spits out something that I, as a normal American, would consider to be basically native English level. And then I asked it to translate the same paragraph into Korean. And then I I asked it to rephrase that same paragraph into a professional Korean business setting. Then I sent it to one of my friends who is a native level speaker in both Korean and English to see how well it does and see what she thinks. And she basically said that it's pretty close to or almost at native level. And if you're Korean, feel free to read and leave your opinion in the comments. But if how good it is at English is any clue to how good it is in other languages, then that basically means the language barrier problems of the world might disappear by next year. Like, think about it. ChatGPT can translate things to other languages at what appears to be almost native level. Can you imagine an AI that was specifically designed for language translation in mind? Like, instead of being a general intelligence, it was just a translator? It would probably master whatever language you needed. And if it's this good this early, that means it can learn languages pretty fast. Which means the world might become a much smaller place by the end of the year. And I think that's extremely important because, as someone who has a lot of international friends, I really truly believe that if more people around the world could talk to each other and actually understand each other, I think we would start to care about each other a bit more. And the more we understand and communicate, I think the better the world will become. So anyway, if you speak other languages, definitely try it out with ChatGPT and let me know how it goes for you in the comments below. But otherwise, as always, hope that helps. Hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you around.